Obama's surveillance state. When an American president announces a speech on his intelligence agency's eyes and ears tune in. That's especially since the Snowden revelations of NSA dishes receiving billions, billions of bits of information from Americans, foreigners, everybody. But that president, smart, smooth as Chinese silk, handsome, took the mic to try to calm the storm by giving privacy advocates and security agencies something to take home. Twitches here, tweaks there, and statements designed more to ease national anxieties than to actually shut down the surveillance state. When President Barack Obama said that the NSA doesn't tap phones except when serious, he frankly sounded more like his predecessor, George W. Bush, than he surely intended. For try as I might, I could not resist the recollection of Bush standing at the lectern the presidential seal reflected in dozens of camera lenses saying the United States does not torture. For was German Chancellor Angela Merkel a national security threat? Were any other leaders? And by declaring no more tapping of phones of leaders, does that now mean second tier leaders will be served? Seems so. The business of intelligence is intelligence. The business of spies is spying. As long as such agencies exist, that's what they'll do, period. That's the real bottom line. And no president will dare to challenge such a powerful tool in his arsenal. Obama, like every president before him, has fallen before the dream of intelligence, a dream that always promises much more than it can really deliver. From imprisoned nations, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Hang in Kruma coming to you, sitting in the sitting in the spot of my man Black Sun for the arena. Before we do anything and go any further, let me offer the disclaimer. The views and the opinions do not reflect Comcast, its faculty, its the management, or any of that. It is strictly the arenas, and we go in hard, you know how we do. Man, today's show is gonna be a hot one. It's a good one. It's, 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 it, it, it has the potential to be very controversial. It's Assange and Snowden. Traitor or hero? And without further ado, let me get to our panel. Let's go to our guest. Let's start with the right, and I'll give you the privilege of introducing yourselves. Thank you. My name is Kevin Karen. Live here in Atlanta for a couple of years now, and uh, do some work related to militarization and trying to stop that. Um, my name is Dawn Gibson. I also live here in Atlanta. I've lived here in Atlanta since 1999, but I've only started becoming active in like local movements mm -hmm. since possibly the end of 2009, more 2010, and, and beyond. My name is Gidon Ben Yasharal. I am a Hebrew priest, a Messianic, uh, and I am a servant of the community and uh, to my God. Wow. Peace, love, and blessings. My name is Vincent Cheeks. I am an entertainer, an actor, and an activist. Right on, right on. Well, we'll get right to the topic. Kevin, Asara yeah. Snowden, trader hero, and why? Well, I think, first of all, this whole business about the word trader and the use of the word trader, I think that's meant to uh, get people to think about both of them in that context. I, I am a very strong supporter of bo what both of them have done in terms of getting us information that we need to know about our government and making that information available. And so I say hero for both of them. Trade a hero. I say hero. I say hero for both of them. I say hero for both of them because, you know, the fact is, is that our government has more and more, you know, become more secretive. Mm -hmm. And it seems like anytime something comes out, they're, they're really violent against these people that bring stuff up. Mm -hmm. So I feel very strongly that anybody who is actually thinking about the people and actually thinking about, you know, violence against people and even thinking about surveillance, which is, which can be interpreted as a type of violence on mm -hmm. people. Yeah, hero. hero. I'm not gonna say traitor. Gideon, though, what about <laughs> national security? Aren't we looking at a fact here that, okay, you know, hands down, we live in America, mm -hmm. bottom line. Mm -hmm. So the fall, we're not the fall of America, 
include the fall of us? And is what he's saying, is it in fact, because I'm hearing hero, hero, but is is what he is what these two are doing, is it dangerous to us as uh, so-called alleged citizens of America? Well, let me just say, first of all, hero. And obviously, the House of Negro, when the house, the master's house was on fire, <laughs> he would say, Master, our house is on fire. We need to get up out of here, uh-huh. boss. Uh-huh. But the people who knew that the master had lied, cheated, and stole to get the house anyhow was the one who set the fire. Right. So <laughs> they, when we see the chickens coming home to roost right. and the revelations of insecurities and all of these secret deals dealings in the smoke filled rooms and it begins to be revealed mm. i think that it begins to enlighten the people where they can make conscious decisions vince uh, i ask you i'm a little split talk to me snowden and assange mm. um for assange i feel like well, for, for one, technically he can't be a traitor because traitors are American citizens who mm, okay. turn point. on their yeah. government and uh, work with the enemy. Uh, but he has been labeled a terrorist by Joe Biden and, mm. and some others. Um, but I would think he would lean more towards the terrorist. Uh, for me, Assange was just a journalist who got his hands on some juicy information right. and he just wanted to expose it for whatever reason just because he had it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Which disclosed a lot of United States government military operations. Right. Um, so that to a certain extent did put us in a little bit of harm's way. Um, Snowden on the other hand, I feel like Snowden is more of a hero mm-hmm. because he took information that the government was using against American citizens. And he let us know what was really going on with the government, how they were spying on us, how they were spying on other world leaders, and not necessarily in the interest of just national security. They were just doing it to be gathering information to use to exploit whenever they felt like it. Okay, so let me let me say this. Didn't that have the potential to cause an international incident, though? Here you're informing other world leaders. And what about the people who we had working for, who America had working for them in the field of espionage? Does this endanger them? So um, I, I think one of the things that we need to start with is who are we so worried about? What are we so scared of? Mm-hmm. Why do we have enemies yeah. 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 And um, I think when we address that question, we get some interesting answers. If we want, I mean, before we went into Iraq, the uh, US government did a study and said the threat of terror will increase if we go into Iraq. Mm-hmm. And we did it anyway, knowing that the threat of terror would increase. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I think it's important to, to analyze that, uh, number one. Number two, Glenn Greenwald, who is the uh, the lawyer for Edward Snowden, he's the one who has revealed a lot of these NSA documents and spoken about them publicly. You know, he uh, was interviewed um, a couple months ago, and they asked him a similar question. And he cited a U.S. government study that was done after these NSA revelations, Mm -hmm. uh, and they asked the NSA of all the bulk collection of all the data that has been collected. How many you know how many terrorist plots have you disrupted? How many American citizens have you saved? They could not point to one piece of data, no incident uh, there that they were able to say, oh yeah, this incident uh, protected Americans. They couldn't do it. And I think that the reason for that is because that's not what the surveillance system is for. It's not really for protecting us. It's it's a, a form of control, which is something that I've, I've discussed with Don a little bit as well. So what was, what was, then here's my thing, you know, and this is, this is open. What, what what was the big, what was so advantageous to Snowden? Uh, we understand by um, uh, Assange, you know, he was a journalist. So he's like, you said, looking for the juicy story. But what was the big thing? Why reveal this then? What what made it so, uh, what did he gain from it, basically? And then two, secondly, who is housing Snowden? Where is Snowden now? I'd like to actually address the the first part, uh, what sort of like motivated Snowden. I happened to see something uh, where he had actually uh, joined the military to join, you know, for the Iraq War because he felt that it was his duty as an American citizen to free the people from oppression. And so joining the Iraq War and going into the Iraq invasion, you know, was to um, um, relieve people's oppression. So I'm thinking that there's probably something that's a part of 
of him that feels duty bound mm -hmm. to you know the citizens in the country like you know I was listening to an interview and he was saying hey I felt like people needed to know this mm -hmm. and that this was being done to the people so I feel like there's a conviction that you know he believes it's sort of like this good guy, bad guy thing that we have in the United States. You know, we're all brought up to believe that the United States is the good guy, you know. And I think that Snowden actually buys that to some degree and believes that, wow, my government is doing something bad. I have to let the people know. So I think that, as far as that's concerned, I think that's what moves him to do that. Uh, I have a quote from Snowden that um, where he explained part of his reason for doing what he did. Um, he says, I don't want to live in a society that does, that does these sorts of things, surveillance on its own citizens. I do not want to live in a world where everything I do and say is recorded. My sole motive is to inform the public as to which is done in their name and that which is done against them. Hmm. Um, so he's basically saying he wants to let the American public know that your government is doing these things to you and they don't have the right or the constitutionality to do these things to you. Mm. Um, he also said that his breaking point came when uh, the director of national intelligence, James Clapper, he was testifying under uh, under oath to Congress mm -hmm. and he blatantly lied and said, we do not have, the, the NSA is not surveilling its own citizens. Right. Mm -hmm. Flat out mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so right. at that point, Snowden mm -hmm. said he felt the need to come forward because he he had tried to talk to people higher up, mm -hmm. uh, people he worked with, and he pretty much came to the conclusion that no one was going to expose. But I mean, okay, we're living in an age of you know the information age where you can get on the internet, you can find anything. Mm -hmm. Borders are basically non-existent now. Mm -hmm. You know, not just here on the you know the, the continent of North America, but the international borders are non-existent. <laughs> so we're looking at increased threats of terrorism. Mm -hmm. We're looking at these sleeper cells. So you don't feel like that it's it's necessary for or that he did a uh, do you feel that he did a good thing that these have that should we just wait for and, I'm, and when I say we I'm playing and, and I hope we know I hear for my viewers y'all know Yanga so y'all know I'm playing devil's advocate <laughs> so don't be emailing me, <laughs> me you know what I'm saying I don't want to hear all of that but this is the arena and we get to it I was going to say that if you did <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> Thank you. but I mean in this age of sleeper cells and real you know real possibilities and real terrorist threats you know what I'm saying? Do you not feel that he really, I mean, well, some of the things that, that are done are necessary. Are we just so pit, uh, upset with America that if anybody throws a stone at her, we want to pick up bricks and throw them too? You remember Scooter Libby? Do you remember the outing of the uh, CIA operative mm -hmm. under the, I believe it was the Bush administration? <clears throat> right. It was the first time it had ever been done. And it compromised a lot of the uh, America's intelligence. I simply brought that point up to say that this particular issue has to do with what America has been saying, telling its population anyway. They told you every keystroke on your computer is being recorded, all your calls. So the government is already telling us that not only are we recording you, we videotaping you, we 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 looking at you from the uh, sky above, from the earth, from this earth beneath, and anywhere in between. So. When we look at what the uh, counterintelligence community could use as information, this is really fluff, I believe, as it pertains to, uh, first of all, Edward Snowden's ability to use the media to get his point across. He's a, a, a very intellectually advanced individual, mm -hmm. very intelligent. And But as it pertains to what this type of information, America's already telling you what they can and can't do. So I don't really believe this has really if it any wasn't, real impact. If it wasn't, if it wasn't so much impact, why is he? Why is he have to be given asylum? If it wasn't so major, why is America after him? You want to answer? I see you leaning forward. Sure. Right? <laughs> so let's get you. Well, I think I think for a lot of people, it's important, and this is important for me in kind of preparing to come here and talk about this particular topic, is to understand what these revelations have been. I think, especially the mainstream uh, news in America, has focused a lot more on you know. What are we going to do about Edward Snowden? What do you think we should do about Let's focus on the person and not focus on the revelation. Exactly. So this all began, exactly. right, in uh, June 5th, 2013, 
the British newspaper The Guardian revealed the leak of NSA classified documents and the first story that they ran was that the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, Surveillance Court it's called FISC, F-I-S-C, it's the FISA Court is what people also call it, um, they had released an order, this is the first story that was revealed, they had an order, it was a secret order, nobody knew about it, that required Verizon to hand over metadata on millions of Americans. Mm. This is basically saying uh, what Vincent mentioned earlier, James Clapper was lying to the American public. Right. Now that court, it's important to understand what is the FISA court? What does that go back to? That was created in 1978 under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Mm. And that was created in response to the U.S. Senate's Church Committee, which investigated the abuses under COINTELPRO, the mm. counterintelligence mm. program that we know spied on Martin Luther King, right. spied on the Black Panthers, right. which culminated in the assassination of uh, Mark Clark and Fred Hampton. Right. So I think it's important to know that we have this history, and the FISA court is supposed to protect us mm. from that terrible history, and the FISA court is basically just saying, yep, okay, check, do whatever you want to do mm. um, in secret. Mm. Wow. Well, also you had organizations like the Sovereignty Commission. Mm. The Sovereignty Commission was an organization that was designed to infiltrate groups like SNCC, NCAACP, mm. Martin Luther King, whoever they thought were quote-unquote terrorists, right. and filter information to the FBI, CIA, uh, the state police. And these were organizations that hired private detectives mm -hmm. to get infiltrate and then or they were paid to give back information so again <clears throat> when I'm relating this to as it relates to Snowden is how information is being extracted from the populace and given to the quote unquote government mm -hmm. and but the government is telling you we getting the information anyway, anyway. So, let me ask <laughs> and so the government you. this is what I wanted to make the point the government outed its own agent mm -hmm. the, in earlier when I was talking about the CIA operative that Scooter Lee Libby, un, mm -hmm. Scooter Libby and under that administration out of their own agent. So this government is so incestuous and so corrupt that it would uh, Edward Snowden's information, albeit it may compromise some level of intelligence, has no impact uh, whatsoever. No. So you mean to tell me that just upset because he just they he he blew the whistle? Well, Obama did say in a statement that his actions put United States troops in danger mm -hmm. and it caused United States enemies to change their tactics right. because they know how they're being surveilled now mm -hmm. with how we're getting information from them. Mm -hmm. um, to go back to what you asked about why does Snowden need asylum, um, you have to understand that the United States government it's a it's a big boy club. It's a it's a it's a um, gangsta <laughs> party, baby. It's a party. Yeah. Gangsta party. Yeah. Gangsta party. Yeah. Gangsta party if you will. Uh, private club. Exactly. And they let Snowden into their club. Mm -hmm. And once you're part of their club, they expect you to abide by the rules. Mm. And one of the rules is. You don't talk on us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't talk. Right. Is that all for them? Don't snitch. Baby. Don't snitch. Um, and so not only did he steal information from the United States government because no one knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He took that information and leaked it in a way that was counterproductive. Uh, such as, I mean how? Talk to him. Well, he just, uh, Obama didn't like the way. Um, Who did he go to with the information? He went to uh, The Guardian um, and the journalists that work at The Guardian. Okay. He went to them first because The Guardian is over in Britain. Mm -hmm. So he, he didn't want to come to the United States. So he took it straight out of the United States. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Now, I mean, he, okay. he, he took right. it to their mouth. He, he called business. Call he called business in somebody else's house. That's let's what he talk. did. Right. Look what your daughter exactly. doing. Right. Exactly. Let's talk. <laughs> He took, oh. So he took it out of the United States. He didn't confront Went to the anybody Queen. here with it. He didn't go through the courts. So basically, at that point in time, he's saying he didn't trust anybody in the United States. No. He took it. He took it out. He took it out of the United States. And who's giving him asylum now? Russia. 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 So Russia. Russia. I mean, so what's the relationship with Russia and the United States? What's the deal with that? Saber What's the deal exactly <laughs> over the Ukraine thing and yeah. this, this, this we know. So what's the deal with him going seeking asylum? 
with somebody that he already knows that his country has a beef with. Well, according to Snowden, he didn't necessarily seek asylum with Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, his plan was to go to Hong Kong, take a flight from Hong Kong to Russia, mm -hmm. and then from Russia fly to a Latin America country. Mm -hmm. um, El Salvador, right? El Salvador. El Salvador. El Salvador. See, Snowden is a businessman. Right. Mm -hmm. Not only is he a businessman, he's been classified as a genius among geniuses. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. But what happened when he got to Russia, mm -hmm. The United States government canceled his mm -hmm. uh, passport, passport. Yeah, his visa and his yeah. passport. Mm -hmm. So, and they did this after he left Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So he was able to use his visa to board his flight to leave Hong Kong. They said by the time he landed in Russia, the United States had uh, uh, Russia got to be careful. He might be getting secrets on them. Wait a minute now. Answer this. Let me, let me, How do America wait, wait, cancel wait, your wait, ability wait. to move on the planet? That's what they do, man. Well, they, <laughs> they, 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 they come on now. They cancel his pants. No, I'm not going to let you get on the program me. and fly under the radar. <laughs> You're not going to get on this program and fly well, under I'm, the radar. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, if, if that's just flight because, you know, within the European Union, you know, something, you know, when I was in France back in 2009, you could go into Italy without having to, because we were kind of nervous because, you know, our stuff wasn't together when we were going into Italy. <laughs> but hey, but so, you know, what, I'm wondering, can he not drive to like a different country or? I, I, I want you to talk, I want to know your sentiments on this whole snow thing about Russia giving him asylum, oh. about the secrets that he leaked. About you know, I want to know, and then eventually going into uh, the COINTEL Pro, I really want to stay on this 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 whole thing because I hear everybody saying hero, 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 but I want us to take some time too to let me know why. Why is he hero? Because what I hear now is snitch. No. <laughs> right. Of course you know. I, I just want to say that the, U, the United States government said that they didn't. Uh, Cancel his passport to intentionally have him stranded mm. in uh, Russia, which is what Snowden in, in his camp is saying that the United mm. States wanted him stranded in Russia as to appear right. as if he was working in conjunction with exactly. the Russian exactly. government. Exactly. Snowden is saying that's not true. Okay. And, and, and the United States government is saying, no, we didn't plan for it to happen like that. He went to Hong Kong, he was going to Russia, that was his plan the whole time. We would never. Uh, of course, do anything <laughs> right. like that to appear to set him up like that. Right. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, why Russia? Um, I don't know. I, I find that Russia has actually been in the news a little bit more lately than I'm comfortable with because I know about the old rhetoric, you know, the old, you know, we're anti-communist and then Russia is associated with that. Anytime there's like a grasp for power, even Afghanistan, you know. So like um, before um, before the, uh, the Ukraine crisis, there was also um, Putin being, you know, anti-gay and then there's mm -hmm. sort of like pressure on you know we should boycott the Olympics because of this and I'm kind of wondering why is and so I'm wondering actually if this was done deliberately you know if it was just sort of like well let's discredit the source because you know what what Snowden exposed you know a lot of people listened mm -hmm. okay and so sometimes what some people will do I don't know um, the myth of Cassandra you know basically she was you know people just she people weren't supposed to believe her prophetic visions right so how do you how do you plug a leak how do you stop something you discredit that leak so I actually think that you know even though they of course are they're going to say we didn't do it on purpose right. I think they did it on purpose you think they did it on to purpose. discredit you know because it's Russia the, the memory of you know because the memory of Russia and the USSR is is still very present in America very yeah, very present absolutely. you know and so basically Basically, our identify our identity as a country, as a capitalist country. You know, growing up, you know, we're taught to we're taught we were taught to pity the Russians because they didn't have choice. They couldn't get Levi jeans. They couldn't get you know do all of these things, right? You know, you didn't hear about the Russian Revolution. You didn't hear about Lenin. You didn't hear about all of that. You know, we also don't really talk too much about the Red Scare in this country. We don't talk about you know like the idea of the fact that calling the president a Marxist or calling him a socialist is an insult tells a lot about us as a country. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that this was deliberate because there are people who are still around during the Cold War who'll be like, 
huh, why is he over Russia? KGB, I mean, that's the first, and it's interesting because even in our cartoons and our popular culture, mm -hmm. you know, Russia is bad, Russia has spies, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I th heard what you saying earlier about, you know, whether the information would be harmful to spies. We seem to, and when I say we as the United States, I'm not at the meeting, <laughs> but like, you know, we seem to want it both ways. We want to be the good guys, but we also want to have bases and spies everywhere. Exactly. I mean, you know, what, what are we, if we're so good and so wonderful, why do we need spies because everywhere? Because our enemies aren't. Because our enemies, enemies? our enemies aren't good and wonderful. If because we're they're so trying good, to stop why do we our have freedom enemies? of choice. We got hamburgers over here. <laughs> good hamburgers. We got good hamburgers. Good. We got, you remember the old, you, remember, you guys may be too young to remember those old Wendy's <laughs> commercials. Mm -hmm. Wendy's used to do a commercial right about Russia. They would say, now the swim, they, they had like a modeling competition. Mm -hmm. They would say, now the swimsuit competition. They would come out, these women would come out from neck until next, and now the song, and it would be the same outfit. Right. So, <laughs> of course, we buy into the idea of freedom. We buy into the idea of, you know, the capitalism is good, mm -hmm. that, you know, you have this freedom of choice. We have it's all American. these things. Right. It's the distinctly whole American, American. Right, the whole American idea, and that they are deprived and, and things. So we would be, but, you know, I'm not so pro-American, but I am going to be realistic. You do have some people that are anti-Western. Well, you, you do. So you're going to have. But you're gonna, why? You're going to have. Exactly. Well, 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 some of them are. Some of them are fanatics. Some of them are religious fanatics. I mean, you know, I'm, I got to keep it real. Some of them want the Sharia. Right. They want this law. They, they want that law. Some of them don't want you to be on television right now as a woman speaking. And America. There are people here has, that don't want me on TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> True indeed. I mean, America, I know what I, I, know what I with, see. With, with, with all its, with all its, with all its faults, and with all its bad things, there are some things that you won't be able to do in other countries. And so you have these people that resent the fact, especially in the age, especially in this information age, that resent the fact that there are certain liberties that um, we have over here, or that women have, or people of color have. It's Hold on, I'm gonna get right to you. It's certain, yeah, the illusion. Well, even if it's the illusion of this liberty, there are still yeah. some people that don't like the illusion of that liberty and they want to stop that. Right. They're not coming over here just because we're capitalists. They don't want women. They don't want you to have televisions. Yeah. They don't want you to eat pork. Yeah. They want, And they are willing to blow you up. Well, well, right. I, I got a, I got a, oh, I got a, so, so something that um, definitely in some of the feminist circles that I've been rolling in, mm. you know, there's this idea that Western feminists have to rescue Eastern women because right. of the oppressive right. things that we that's, go through. That's Yes. And it's just like you know when you, but but it's a, it's also sort of like what is it the the power of the oppressor or the power of the dominant culture to name and to define, mm, right? Absolutely. So it's sort of like oh you're wearing a burqa or your hijab is is oppressive, you mm -hmm. know. And we also forget sort of like what we used to do over here, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I mean you know we talk about you know some people are like oh man I don't like hearing about a young girl over in the Middle East getting shot for just going to school. I'm like yeah so. Like a lot of little girls were harmed over here. Absolutely. Did they exactly. blow up four girls in a in church? In Chicago, in a church, sixty-one killed. Exactly. I mean, but it's still, you know, but, it's, but, but see, the thing is that we don't. I think, as the United States, it, you know, there's this this is weird thing that we're doing because going back to Russia, even you know, this this sort of like, oh my God, Russia is homophobic. Look what they're doing. Yeah. I'm like, look what you're doing. Yeah, we were just, we were just like, but I mean, the fact still remains, and and, and feel free. To well, let me in. just say this because that we have I, enemies. I don't know if you all are old enough to remember perestroika and glosnos. These were terms that were used during an administration in the Russian uh, Crimea, the regime that was uh, reflecting openness, a new Russia. Mm -hmm. And I believe we have forgotten this because the America has always had to have some evil enemy yes. to but pit. Yes. Do we not have, a, I mean, is not the threat real? Well, I mean, it's not, I don't think it's, if you, can, you can do, I mean, even if you wasn't in, in imperialism, well, the fact that we have, are, the fact that we have certain enemy. liberties, I mean, I keep, I don't, I don't hear anyone addressing that, that issue. The fact that we but have see, certain liberties are creating realistic. Well, let me just say this briefly. Somewhat over-exaggerated. Well, let me just say this.
Yeah. You don't have to speak on it. Let the issue, they don't want to hear you speak right. on The only issue I want to say is that it is a re, it's a reflection of liberty. It's not true liberty. That's why we're living in a police state. Mm -hmm. So the issue isn't that they don't talk about liberty. They just that we don't have it. That's why the land has been taken from us. That's why our communities have been gentrified. Mm -hmm. That's how they're able to go in and even in political process and uh, redefine uh, uh, certain political uh, uh, blocks that we would normally be able to arrest power through their political uh, structure. Mm -hmm. But then when they go and gerrymander and, and, and redesign districts, we lose Okay, that. Well, I understand that, Gideon, and I know you want to, we're going to get you in here, Kevin. I understand that, but no one is still addressing the issue. It, are there real? Are there real? For all that we say over here, do, it, are there real threats to America? Not based on our imperialism, or capitalism, but just on the fact that they don't so of many people all over the world. And we're so and we're so and and they're anti-Western. Wait a minute. Let my man Vince go. Hold on. I've been waiting to use this. The gal was on. The gal that came out. The gal was spoken. Let my man Vince get in. I want to hear what you have to say, and then we're gonna go to Kevin because you've been waiting patiently. The threat to the U.S. There is a very real threat. Mm -hmm. to the United States and our government. But what the government doesn't tell you is a lot of the threats that are coming against us were facilitated by us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. for, for instance, Osama bin Laden. Thank you. They, right. he, he was the number one terror suspect, this, that, and the other, primary evil, whatever, mm -hmm. evil axis. <laughs> but they don't tell you we trained him. Come on. Right. We That's gave him the gun. He's a client of the CIA. The intel right. that exactly. he has about us exactly. to do the things that he does. Exactly. So Preach. there is a threat. Uh, slightly over exaggerated by the United States government, but real nonetheless. Uh, it, it is there. So you saying that we created our own enemies? Mm -hmm. There you go. Are you, yeah. You and yeah, paid them. You, I'm sorry. Do you no. agree with that? Okay. And, and, do, and give me a little bit. Well, I think there are obviously scenarios where we have created our own enemies. I think it might be a bit irresponsible if if we say, "Hey, there's no threats and there's nothing we can do okay. about it." Right. That, so let's say, let's say there are people out there that want to do harm. Let's let's like imagine that and take that as a given. Well, we have a system that's in place and set up to do that. There are a couple problems with that system. The first problem is that right now there have been multiple cases of the U.S. government. They're collecting so much data mm -hmm. that they're missing the actual important stuff. They're right. missing right. the stuff that they need to get. And what we're asking for, or what Glenn Greenwald and Edward Snowden, who are not radicals by the way, mm -hmm. what right. they're asking for is just to say, hey, you want to go search my computer and get every piece of information that I've ever typed up? You want to do that? Get a warrant. Okay. Mm. We are not, our information is not protected. Mm -hmm. The program X keystroke, which was revealed through the NSA documents, right. means that every keystroke, exactly. everything on your is. computer can be accessible. Yeah. All we need is one username to one website to be able to what? track your computer. Damn, so they ain't All we need is... Big <laughs> 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 There was a revelation, there was a revelation on the NSA documents that they are collecting the porn, the pornography habits mm -hmm. of activists in order to use them wow. to spread their hate. This is confirmed right. and documented mm -hmm. through real reporting from right. The Guardian and through other NSA Man. documents. Porn is not free. It is not free. Mm -hmm. Nothing is free. Mm -hmm. So, but, okay, so we're saying this, so what I'm hearing here is two things. One, that we create our own enemy. Right. Not the fact that we emphasize Infidels. It couldn't be. It's not the fact that doing to certain religions that you don't believe as they believe, so you're an enemy. That's the first thing I mean. And secondly, I'm hearing from the people that say, you know, America this, America that. You're basically fighting for your constitutional rights. Explain that to me. Now, if, if America is this and that, then we're sitting here saying, but my rights is my constitutional rights are being violated. Why are you even arguing about your constitutional rights? And then you're arguing about the very nation that 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 gave you this constitution. But what is the line? between national security and personal privacy. Mm, right. I mean, what, what, right. where does it stop? If, if they're collecting all of my information, 
are they collecting it just so they can have it and, and put all my information in a folder or are they collecting it because they feel that Vincent Cheeks is a threat to the United States mm -hmm. and its and its citizens mm -hmm. or I mean really what what is really going on and from what Snowden is telling us it's just a mass collection of data where they can't even really follow real serious leads they so it, it, it doesn't have anything to do with connections from one of the things I heard is they're checking the people that may call people that may call people and it's not you know it's just that you just think they're just picking civilians randomly is this what I mean well there are people in the community that are being hired to go and look at people's uh, write down people's license plates mm. it's a job on the internet that a person goes out and they are paid to write down people's license on uh, their uh, license plate. Random and license plate? Li random license plate. Why would information like that be required? Because information is power. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what this is an information system. Mm -hmm. The society is an information, electronic information system. But this system, if man developed it, man can compromise. It. it can be cracked. Mm -hmm. It can be hacked. Mm -hmm. And these hackers, like Edward Snowden, in a way, is a hacker. He hacked into some information, took it out, and became a his own businessman and entrepreneur. And Did he get paid for this? Did he sell the information? <laughs> he just, he just, no, he just he nilly willy gave it up. Well, right. That's what really constitutes a, a traitor, a traitor right? Here, right. Mm -hmm. Someone who is selling or even giving the information to our enemies mm -hmm. for a personal gain. Mm -hmm. Snowden didn't do that. No, he didn't. Snowden just said He's just a whistleblower. Right. Our government right. Mm -hmm. is spying on its citizens and our allies mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. And I feel that they have a right to know that. If mm -hmm. you're going to spy on the citizens, then let them know. Mm -hmm. And if That's you have a good reason them, to them, Vincent. Mm -hmm. If you let us know. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, 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 now, why are we spying on our citizens? Why are we spying? Why do we need to spy? Wait a minute now. Have a good reason for doing it. And at least let me in on the fact that you're collecting my information and storing it in a file that's going to be there forever. Mm -hmm. Like these files aren't going away. Mm -hmm. Just my information, my, my text messages that I've sent to exactly. my lady friend. Mm -hmm. And can be used against you in and can court. Be used against me. What, what is the purpose of, what, what is this program called? That they uh, dish file. They have a dish file a about that. through uh, the NSA program mm -hmm. that collects 200 million text messages a day Whoa. from oh. American citizens. So it can be used against you in court. Exactly. What reason does the United States government have to collect 200 million text messages a day from us? It's regular from citizens. Unless you have a, a, uh, a proven reason to be collecting that kind of data on us for no reason. That I mean, so it's just, it is, it is, I guess here's my question, and this is open for anyone. My question is, so you're just sitting there, you're telling us and you're telling the viewers right. that this is just random. That they just that they just picking people that no none of these people have ties or probably not even Muslim names. Damn, no. I know you at least got a, a Muslim or a Hebrew <laughs> name or a Russian no, name. No, they it's got us on lockdown already. It's, so it's just random. It's random citizens. And then, secondly, how far would you go for security? We all know about 9/11. We know about uh, the Boston bombings. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I wish somebody would have uh, tapped into them, mm -hmm. young men, gentlemen, if they did do it allegedly. Right. You know, we say that would have tapped into yeah. themselves phones to prevent something like that from happening. Um, the thing that happened in the Olympics down here at the time, I'm sure someone with you in 96 would have tapped in itself. So how far is too far to secure the citizens, the citizens, the citizens of your nation? I'm not sure if I actually believe that um because the rhetoric that I, I seem to be getting is that, you know, we're trying to do this so that you can feel safe, mm. you know, so that right. um, the That's people right. can feel safe. But, you know, the Klan had run rampant in this country <laughs> for a long time. And to be perfectly honest, um, I don't know if you guys uh, know, uh, remember Stetson Kennedy, um, Stetson, uh, one of a local Georgian who infiltrated the Ku Klux Klan. Mm. And, you know, in order to get, you, know, you can go over to Georgia State University's uh, special 
collections and find all sort of like transcripts of recordings and stuff like that. But you know, he couldn't, you know, he couldn't really get help so much from the FBI. You're also talking about in this state, um, you know, with convict leasing and peonage, you know, where if somebody, if, if somebody, mostly somebody black is picked up for um, being a vagrant, you know, that's, that's how that is. And suddenly they have all these fees and then somebody comes and say, well, you can work for me and work off those fees. That's illegal. But really, you know, there's, there's a history of kind of like these people who are supposed to protect you looking the other way. So it makes me kind of wonder when we say, well, there are certain things that we need to protect us. But the thing is, is that people in this country, and in fact, you know, Malcolm X even said that in, you know, the ballot or the bullet, that the government is not doing its job of protecting the people. I mean, if you look at the Freedom Writers uh, uh, documentary, you see essentially law enforcement colluding with the KKK to harm some people who decide to ride the bus together. So where is the protection? Did you all see the shot of the state trooper beating Holly? Oh, yes. Sister. Yes. And, and, yes. and what, he, what was his response? I was protecting her. That's what yeah. he beat yeah, this yeah, 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 It's not funny. It's not funny. They've been beating. Yeah, I mean, right, they he beat this but yeah. sister. the rationale behind that. This, is which is what she was saying. Yeah. When the, they were saying, oh, we. this is why white America has been telling us. Yeah. We beat. Y'all know y'all better off over here with us killing y'all off wholesale, mm -hmm. feeding you all this poison food. Right. Y'all could have been in Africa over there with mm -hmm. them lions chasing you. Mm -hmm. This is the rationale oh, yes. with <laughs> this uh, 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 state trooper mm -hmm. pummeling mm -hmm. this female. Yeah. And, yes. they be, and then we, what, and you know what? Black women support the political process more than any other gender. Right. They've surpassed white women. Yeah. Our women are voting. They're supporting a system that's bent you, on their destruction. Absolutely. absolutely. But here's the thing. When we say, and man, that was, that was, that was you know, that was ridiculous. It was horrendous. Yes. You know, my question, that's a whole nother, whole nother show. Uh, that's because I wondered show where <laughs> the brothers were that were riding by. Riding that's why, by. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You, it would have been a whole different yeah. YouTube blog. <laughs> If I was riding by, it have been a whole different. <laughs> but that's all. But my thing is, is that is 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 our anger, or our people's anger oppressed people's anger. I'm not even gonna say Africans here in America. I'm gonna say oppressed because it's a class thing. Yeah. And you're being realistic, right. class um, influence, right. and all that. So is it a, a, a matter of people's anger making us? Uh, make Snowden and uh, Assange these heroes. Finally, somebody's like with O.J. Simpson. Now, a lot of people feel like, and me too, and I say perly, O.J., you, you, come on, man. <laughs> come on, O.J. You jam, you know what I'm saying? But I'm glad you jam because the system has, you know, been getting well. You can't be tried against double jeopardy. They got your silly butt for trying to get your Heisman. Right. But, you know, we feel like you jam, but is it an O.J., the O.J. thing where, Nine 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 nine. Y'all been sticking it to us, and OJ stuck it to y'all. Is this the same case with Snowden and Assange, with the oppressed people? Is nine 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 nine? We know America has been sticking it to oppressed people. Now someone stuck it to y'all, and we're not being realistic about the danger that may may come behind you. I, I guess what I would want to say to that is, I think we need to at least see some of the value mm. in what a whistleblower brings to the table, right? So Daniel Ellsberg, who was who's famous for being the whistleblower that published the Pentagon Papers, which revealed that we were actually bombing Cambodia and the Vietnam War and uh, led to a surge in the anti-war movement and eventually like winding down that war. Um, Daniel Ellsberg is almost unanimously viewed as someone who contributed to American uh, progress in some way or another. People value him and think that he did a great thing. And he's going to be speaking in New York next week at a conference. He has thrown full support behind Edward Snowden. And we know because he was willing to take that risk. But at the time, he was called a traitor. Wow. And, and Chelsea Manning, who we've discussed as well, who released the Iraq war logs and the Afghan no, war logs. Can, yeah. you, can you, when you say Chelsea? Sure, uh, sure, sure. 
Oh, no, Chelsea Manning. I'm yeah. thinking of Private Bradley. Okay, yeah. so uh, Private Bradley Manning, um, formerly <laughs> Private Bradley Manning, who has now chosen to identify as a, a trans woman, as Chelsea Manning. Mm -hmm. um, she is now locked up for 35 years. Mm -hmm. She was under solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about anybody else, but there were petitions that were out there. I signed mm -hmm. the petitions to have her trial be open for the public to view because she was the one who released information uh, regarding um, the, the the actual attacks in right. Afghanistan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the in Iraq. Video. Yeah, the murder video. Collateral murder. Collateral murder video where you see a reporter and two other uh, Reuters employees being killed, children in the van, the father's killed and they're injured. Yeah. All, all of that's known by the people who are firing the weapons. Um, and so she's spending 35 years in prison. That's instructive. And, and that's the US government saying, hey, this is what we're going to do to you if you tell on us. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to see that, because otherwise, we wouldn't know about a lot of these abuses if people weren't willing to take risks. So I think that they have done something of value for us. That's my perspective and on <laughs> why they're heroes. In reference to that, and I, you know, a new one of my sheroes is Sherry Peel Jackson. And you can uh, Google her on cherrypilljackson.org. Mm. She was an IRS agent for seven years. And when she began to do the research on the IRS, you know I've been talking to people about it for many years, how it qualifies us as being slaves and how they've used us at, on their universal product code and the taxation of us as their product. Social and, security number. Yeah. Social security number, it's all tied in together. But all people are concerned about is what they're gonna get back on mm -hmm. their taxes, <laughs> whereas the slave wasn't supposed to be taxed anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, in reference to what you were saying, about she was began to educate people about what she found out about the IRS and their uh, not having the power that they say they have over us is more lack of knowledge right. and fear tactics that they use and as a result of that she was picked up now mm -hmm. she had worked for the IRS for seven years and when she started to reveal this information they never arrested her but she was off the streets for seven years mm -hmm. that's what they call under the Patriot that you, I, any of us, you terrorists, I've been cited as a terrorist since the 80s, mm. and they can pick you up but, without yeah. due process. Yeah, well, Under they did. Especially oh, the Under the National Defense Authorization Act mm. that Obama just signed, yeah. they've upped the ante. They upped it. So these are very important, but see, these are soldiers, patriots, yeah. that are, or get, well, like Snowden, revealing information to the populace uh, despite the fact that their, may, their own life may be in peril. Don, I, I seen that you were leaning forward when we were talking about Private Bradley and, say, and the, the whole thing and the, the weather is like what Kevin said, whether it was beneficial or not, the information and how it affected us. Yeah, I, I think I think um, when we're talking about, you know, it seems like we're talking about this uh, not separately necessarily, but I think in the national imagination, you know, the idea that um, every keystroke is being recorded Recorded. We're forgetting that there have been movements of resistance within, you know, the past few years. I mean, I know Occupy is the most popular one, but we've forgotten about the anti-globalization movement. We've forgotten about the student movement that happened in the early 2010s, you know, where students were literally taking over buildings and renaming True. them. True. That was hot. Yeah. That was hot. You know, took over Wheeler Hall and said, we're going to call it Freeler Hall. Right. You know, we were feeling that, you know, when, you know, the occupation was in Woodruff Park and we said, we're going to call it Troy Davis Park, right. mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, Troy Davis had been murdered by the state, you yeah. know, just recently. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got, like, and also, I believe around 2010, you know, there were the, the, the roundup, um, you know, start uh, all of a sudden these grand jury um, summons for a lot of these peace activists and Palestine solidarity activists. So it's, so it's a sort of like, maybe what they're, and I say they in terms of the government, maybe there's a fear of resistance mm -hmm. and they want, and they're basically trying to do this preemptive thing where they, they're watching to see who, you know, because if you look at some of the conversations that are happening, you know, some of the work that I started with was in Palestine Solidarity. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that the conversations we were having about Israel are a lot different now than they were before. Mm -hmm. See, now people are like, well, what's going on over in Israel? Mm -hmm. You know, why is it that our local corporate news, you know, because a lot of people don't know that like six 
you know, corporations own all the media oh, in this country. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't right. talk about that. We don't talk about, you know, sort of like the control of information. Mm -hmm. We'll read stuff like 1984 mm -hmm. and we'll say, ha 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 ha, they're mean over here. But, you know, more and more, it seems like the state is moving into a very oppressive police state. Absolutely. You know, we've got the militarized <laughs> police. You know, part of their deal is surveillance. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. I was just telling Kevin on the way over here that, you know, I know some of y'all might have been to Gladys and Ron's for dinner or something like that, <laughs> chicken and waffles. Mm -hmm. But there's a cop that stands at the front of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about That's for our safety though. Yes, when you think about <laughs> well, say, when you think about black youth who go yeah. into stores and are tailed around, you know, right. even thinking it right. during like the LA uprisings, LA riots for those who don't look right. like that, mm -hmm. yep. you know, the idea that you know the whole thing about you know uh, people outside of the community owning businesses, you know, basically criminalizing. You know, Absolutely. one thing that a lot of people don't remember is that girl who was shot oh, in a yeah. Korean grocery oh, yeah. store. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like yeah, so, so like the different so so as far as like surveillance is concerned. Concern. We're talking about this. I noticed that you know a lot more people who are not traditionally marginalized, who are not traditionally oppressed, suddenly they're just like, "Whoa, we're being watched." Mm -hmm. and, and so that's you know, so like you know, Chelsea Manning, you know, releasing this video of sort of like, "Wow, the United States is doing something really, really bad." Because on the other hand, we have support our troops. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, right. They're protecting our freedoms. Right. Uh -oh. And what they use, they use that support our troops. They're protecting our freedoms as if there weren't labor movements in this country but to help troops, us get our but rights. But aren't the troops protecting our freedom? And is it the troops for From whom? Who's trying to take our freedom? Who's trying to Thank take you. our freedom? Al Qaeda. We're the, Al -Qaeda. the communists. Uh, the but, but get this. Yes. Do, right. you, do you remember? Do you remember? The terrorists. The everywhere. Terrorists. Hearing that I don't at know the who the terrorists are, but the terrorists. That at the end of Rambo they have Free, dreadlocks. there was a shout out <laughs> to the Muhadeen yeah. from, from the U.S. government. Well, that's when they was fighting Russia. Yes. They were our buddies when they were fighting Russia. <laughs> and, and didn't everybody yeah, love it? Whenever, when Nelson Mandela died, you know, Clinton and everybody were talking about, oh, Nelson yeah. Mandela, uh. he was on the list of terrorists Thank for you. decades. Absolutely. Thank right. you. Absolutely. But you know, yeah, he wasn't a terrorist. So, so, <laughs> so basically, how, how our country defines who's the good guy and who's the yeah, bad guy. Right. Because something I remember from 1984 was like, okay, now we're at war with this country this week. And I was like, weren't we at war with such and such last yeah. week? But exactly. that's what we're doing. But, uh, like, but, here it's like Iraq one week, Iraq but all jokes aside. No, no. You really don't. So everybody yeah, on this, everybody on this panel, you. with all jokes aside, everyone on this panel really doesn't feel like that. Not for the imperialism, not for because maybe we stepped on someone's shoe or sandal or kicked someone's camel. Or, and I'm not being stereotypical. Please don't. <laughs> I'm not talking about the other ethnicity. But or we did something crazy. Like you really, no one really feels like that. We just have enemies because of our Western ways. I mean, because well, we know that's certain, exactly like, what it is. Yeah. <laughs> right, no, oh, I know what he's saying. Kitty, you don't count. You can sound like you know, sort of like, you know, all the girls just hate you because you're pretty. That's what that sounds like. Exactly. But the thing is, is that you know, these countries, you know, you know, if they have control over, like say if we have these freedoms that are amazing, if we have all of these things, you know, if they wanted those things, they could put them through their country. But the they thing is, is that, but here's something else. You know, this country that claims to love democracy mm -hmm. has removed Demo democratically yes. elected Absolutely. people. Yes. Come yes. On. In fact, more Come than on. once. Wait a minute, you'll so start thinking don't again. Don't right. start doing no thinking in it. Right, you're doing too much. That's it. That, that you know, is absolutely right. We and don't. our military, you know, since we seem to, you know, since suddenly, you know, the U.S. government is interested in women's rights in the mm -hmm. U.S. military, I think the statistic is one out of three women are assaulted, sexually Absolutely. assaulted. Oh, now they Absolutely. have another thing. My sister is a, is a cat. Oh, man, should I even say? Yeah, my sister is a captain mm -mm. in the United <laughs> States military. Now they have the thing, and her locks were long, beautiful locks, mm -hmm. where they, the women have to uh, yes. cut their hair now. The women, uh, oh, it's all uniformity. Really? She mm. came on ball headed. G.I. Jane. Yeah, all wow. is, is oh, uniformity. G.I. Jane. So, but here it is, though. Do you not enjoy television? Uh oh. Yes. Do you not yes. enjoy your right to certain musics? 
your right to certain foods. And you have people out here that are willing to kill in the name of their God or in the name of their uh, ideology or philosophy or theocracy or whatever to stop that to to stop that because this is what God has told them to do. But I don't think I don't think actually necessarily that that is 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 a is a monolith in you know the groups that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know there are people over here that want to shut down. Absolutely. That's yeah, why exactly. that's why we got their phones uh, tapped. But <laughs> that's why we got their phones tapped. But I think what we're also underestimating. We they when we talk about globalization, <laughs> we're talking about the speed of, of goods and stuff uh. going all over the world. You know, it was weird being in France, basically not being away from American culture. Mm. They got you know high school Every musical on got, the yeah. stand. Mm, you know, right. playing American. So so basically, people have access to these things mm. that we have access to. The only thing is they don't have access to our websites in the United States because the United States blocks those access. Well, I heard we're about to oh, sell the okay. internet. Oh, I yeah. want to get to oh, yeah, I want to end this so patient. Oh, oh, yeah, definitely. And he's no, no, go let me go. No, let me, uh -huh. let, let's get to it. In fact, I was just going to give a disclaimer because, you know, like, uh, Yanger is definitely, he's still, this is deep cover now. He's <laughs> <laughs> playing devil's advocate. I'm a science so man. Yeah, man. Look out I'm now. I just want to make sure y'all recognize that. Right, I yo, go ahead. Thank you, brother, for giving that disclaimer. It's still all power to the people. Get the camera on. It's still all power to the people. Yo, it's it. But we got to do what we got to do. It's for the show. But listen, coming around in our last couple minutes, we got 10 minutes. Let's give everyone like two or three minutes to do a wrap up. Because this has been a real interesting panel. And I want to thank everyone for being on here and no giving their take. No Let's start with you, Brother Vincent. Here's my wrap up. And it goes back to what you said earlier about uh, does the government go too far? Yes, we have threats. Yes, some of them are very real. Some of them are exaggerated. Some of them are non-existent. Threat, they need to surveil these people who they consider our enemies. And I totally understand that. If you have uh, a good reason to do so, then do that. But to uh, so, uh, have surveillance on your citizens and on your allies for no particular reason. If you, have, if you think I did something because I researched Snowden and Assange and what's going on with this situation, Send somebody in a suit to knock on my door right. and say, Mr. Cheeks, uh, I'm here with the federal government. We have some questions about some of the things you've been researching. Uh, can we talk to you? Right. Let me know, you know, that they, let me know that I'm on a list or whatever because I'm researching whatever. I, I would probably be better with that. Mm -hmm. I might not like it, but to be shrouded in this secrecy mm -hmm. and to go behind the backs of the American citizens and your allies who you're supposed to be working closely in conjunction with. I mean, we tapped uh, the German Chancellor's mobile phone, mm -hmm. for God's sake. Yeah. It gave no <laughs> reasoning yeah. behind it, okay? Yeah. Um, so a little bit more disclosure yeah. and transparency yeah. would help coming from the government, yeah. but I know that that's asking for a lot. That's asking for a lot, Mr. Cheeks. Gary, let's get you got two, you got two, two to three minutes, brother. Oh yeah, it'll just take me a couple of minutes. You know, as a Hebrew and one who believes in the biblical story. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> had to give you one. No, I'm sorry, man. You know, sir, no, wait, don't come on with the biblical stories. I'm just I know, I, didn't far, so I had to give my brother one. <laughs> well, thank you for allowing me to that interlude in spirituality. But it, because I recognize that we're in an occupied state, we're, in, we're at war, literally, on a spiritual level, on a natural level. And for me, it's for our children, the beautiful children in our congregation, the congregation of Yeshua, the beautiful children all over the world, but specifically in America, we need to let them know that this system is destroying their air, the water, their military, they're arresting the vast majority of the population. And actually, the vast majority of the populace recognize this, because the vast majority of the populace don't vote for this system. A vote for this system isn't what they tell you, oh, if you don't vote, you don't count. It's when you vote that you've already counted yourself out right. because you've signed off on whatever they yeah, did. Man, you're now trying you, to get us to start a whole nother show. <laughs> Brother, you know you and I go back and forth. I'm gonna go, you're gonna get us to start a whole nother show. We're gonna move on. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, thank you for the input. You're gonna go a whole nother show there, man. You, we gonna go back well, and forth. Well, no, I'm just thing. gonna say, in conclusion, the cree for me yeah. is the fact that when America goes, it's going to force us to come together. And when we come together, that power of the Most High will lead us in the right direction. Thank you for that. 
<laughs> Sister Don. I was actually down for that, that other show. Um, I, I guess when I'm thinking about all of this, you know, I think about what's going on with the, uh, with the NSA and all of these things, and even thinking about COINTELPRO, you know, that, you know, it's, it's used to crush dissent. You know, like they envy us for our freedoms, but you know, somehow there's still resistance in those, you know, countries and whatever, you know, where they supposedly don't have freedoms. But I feel like it's another step towards, you know, being an openly non democratic nation. Mm. You can talk about fascism if you like, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the, you know, trying to think of it separate from the, you know, the hyper militarization. I don't, it's been militarized for a while, but right. now, you know, the, you know, they're getting. The, old, the, the military's old toys, and our discretionary fund goes toward mostly towards the maintenance of the military, towards military bases all over the world and stuff like that. Nobody will come here and ask us, you know, can we have a base here? We have those bases. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem to me like it's something separate from that, mm -hmm. you know, that basically we're moving towards the very state that we fear, mm -hmm. that we say that we fear in other nations. Mm -hmm. right. And so for me, it's just like, it's, 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 it's a taste of what's to come. And I think that our own fear, you know, because we don't experience what other countries have. You know, there's there's a, a banner that was dropped in Atlanta where they're just like, your 9-11 is our 24-7. Mm. You know, because as a country, we don't mm. experience war the way other countries uh, Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Let me get in, 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 in give a couple, couple minutes. Yeah, can, sure. Can you give us a... Um, Okay, so I, I think Dawn mentioned fear, and I think that um, a lot of the narrative that's been constructed by the people in power, and who, who am I talking about specifically? Alan Dershowitz and uh, General Hayden and uh, James Clapper. These are uh, high-level officials, and Alan Dershowitz used to work for the ACLU, and he's like defending all this. So, wow. I mean, we have to remember that these people are, are creating this other narrative, and a lot of it is based on fear. It's based on this idea that, look, if we don't do this, if you don't let us do do this, right. or you don't tolerate it, mm -hmm. or just put up with it, because right. uh, we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> 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 If you don't put up with it, then bad things are going to happen to you. And I would encourage anyone who is still concerned about that to go and just look at, just Google Snowden timeline. Um, and, and you'll find Al Jazeera did a really great report that just has a timeline of the revelations and what they mean. And I think what people will see is that the PRISM program, which connects Google and YouTube, I mean, if people are watching this video right now, they know about it. So uh, these programs are for surveillance of everything. Everybody, blanket surveillance, mm -hmm. not necessarily for protecting us from any evils. Well, we definitely appreciate our panel, high power panel. Mm -hmm. We appreciate Comcast for giving us an opportunity again to come to Gate to bring That's you right. the arena. That's right. That live talk. I want to thank our, okay. our, our host who wasn't on today and our super producer, Black Sun. Mm -hmm. Again, the panel, I'm your boy, Yang and Krumah, mm -hmm. coming at you. Mm -hmm. Man. Doing it's, it real big. Doing it real big. You know what I mean? Doing it big, hey, doing big things. Because it's a hot seat. Come on, Come on, Oh, we love it. So um, just, hey, man, I want to thank you and hope that we can have you out again. Right. <laughs> out again yes. and get on, get on some different, uh, different subjects. Yes. So with that said, we'll wrap it up. Uh, Bring it on out. Up house to the people. Uh, Again, the disclaimer. Y'all know me. <laughs> don't go to tripping. <laughs> uh, don't hit my email. So. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So he was that he was a No, he was that oh, man, boy, was he good? He was, he was, good. He was super good. Are we out? Peace. <laughs> we we out. Peace, man. See you next week, man. Had too much fun to be man, in this way too much, man. Right, man. We out. I told you he could carry this thing, man. Listen, man. Man, look, I ain't gonna be getting no call from Mr. Hunt. I'm gonna be out of the doorway. I'm just telling you. I was like, I would put up to it, my son, and get you back.